one point, dog. I wasn't always having hot beats. I learned how to make hot beats. I'm focusing on rhyming now. I'm gonna be the fucking best. What up, guys? It's your boy Ali, and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. Now, in the early 90s, Dame Dash, Jay-Z, and Kareem Biggs formulated a plan to create a record label of their own. They formed Rockefeller Records. They released Jay-Z's first album called Reasonable Doubt on the label. And after that, it became apparent to the trio and the rest of the world that Rockefeller Records was here to stay. Now, in 2004, Kanye dropped the college dropout through Rockefeller Records. However, before he dropped that album, he was best known for making beats. Kanye had a knack for combining soulful samples with hard-hitting drums, and his talents took him so far that he became a producer for Rockefeller Records. Kanye produced beats for some of the biggest artists in the game, however as we all know, his desire to be a rapper eventually outgrew his desire to produce music. Over the years, we have witnessed Kanye become a brand, a household name, and an occasional troll. But before Kanye developed the insane ability to troll TMZ, and subsequently released a gospel album right after his poisonous remarks about slavery. When you hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. He was just a kid that had a desire to make it big as a rapper. Like as we all know, Kanye always aspired to be the next big thing. He would constantly freestyle for anybody that would listen to him. He was always loud and abrasive, and he was always cocky. I'ma come out number one. Hopefully, if it's not the first album, be the second album. If it's not the second album, be the third album. I'm not just trying to say I'ma come out and sell 10 million, but I'ma do everything I got in my power, and I gotta one up because I just hear my beats first. But even though he had a lot of potential, a lot of people in the industry were not paying attention to him. And that includes Jay-Z. Kanye's desire to be the best made his music better. It gave him confidence, and eventually Kanye's unique style caught the attention of Dame Dash. Like I know for a fact Biggs was like, yo Dame, you gotta watch Kanye, he's gonna do hot. And he wanted me to fight for him. As we all know, Rockefeller got sold to Def Jam. Jay chose to leave Rockefeller and become the CEO of Def Jam because he didn't like the way business was being handled at Rockefeller. When Jay left, the split between Dame Dash, Kareem Biggs, and Jay became official. It caused a lot of tension between the founders of Rockefeller. And as a result, a lot of artists on Rockefeller had to choose between siding with Jay and Def Jam or with Dame and Kareem Biggs. As we all know, Kanye chose to ride with Jay-Z over Dame. A lot of people feel like Kanye should have stuck with Dame Dash because Dame was the one who discovered his potential and put him on the map. Dame saw the vision when nobody else would. He invested in Kanye. However, as we all got to find out, some investments did not pay off. Now, a lot of questions arise from this situation. Without Dame's influence, would Kanye be as big as he is today? Should he have sided with Dame Dash over Jay-Z? And what would you have done if you were placed in a similar situation? Let's discuss. Okay. I appreciate you, bro. I gotta give you props. That's some all this shit you did. I fuck with it. The merch is crazy. The merch is crazy. Now Kanye did an interview with The Breakfast Club a while back. He spoke about his decision to side with Jay-Z over Dame Dash and his opinions were very telling. At the time, Kanye wanted to learn how to maneuver the corporate world from Jay-Z. Also, Kanye considered Dame's approach to be harsh. As we all know, Dame Dash was always loud and argumentative. Then I gotta be the asshole and yell. I don't feel like doing that shit all the time. I'm sick of that shit. Yo, for 30% of my day goes to correcting your fucking mistake. They're gonna pay me more for that? He seems like the type of guy who doesn't waste an opportunity to start an argument. In fact, Dame Dash's personality is so abrasive and so off-putting to some people that a lot of people in the industry do not want to work with him. He said, Vlad said, we have a list. Damon's on that list. All yeah. of, obviously they're sharing a list. He said it. He actually admitted there's a list and we're going to accept that? Anyway, fuck that list. I don't, anybody who has that list is white. They're only making that list because they're not allowed to work with me. However, sometimes his combative nature is justified. That's why I'm asking questions. Everybody looking dumb in the face. So what were we doing? What was we talking about in terms of the day? Let me know. Whereas Dame Dash was allowed and argumentative, Jay was calm, cool, and collected. Another reason Kanye didn't choose Dame Dash over Jay-Z is because he felt Dame's personality was too similar to his. Kanye is also loud and he's also abrasive. And sometimes that can rub people the wrong way too. Kanye wanted to learn how to be likable from Jay because he knew that being likable would earn him more recognition. The problem was with Dame, his truth was more accurate and more closer to what mine was. But his technique was harsh for me as a young kid and stuff. I felt like a little bit more pressure and Jay-Z was a nice guy. And I also felt like I had that truth that Dame has in him. We the same, me and Cam, me and Dame, 
me the same. But I wanted to learn this technique that Jay got of actually being likable. So Jay-Z know how to move in a room full of vouchers. You know what I'm saying? As his little brother, I needed to learn that technique because I got something that God wanted me to give the world. Now let me translate what Kanye is saying here. I'm siding with Jay because Jay is going to make me more money than Dame Dash ever could. It's called the music business for a reason. In this situation, Jay was the artist and as a result he was more popular than Dame and Biggs. Not only that, the entire Rockefeller band was built around him. Jay had the attention of the fans, not Dame and not Biggs, which ultimately meant that Jay held all the cards. Kanye chose Jay-Z because being next to Jay was going to be a better look for him. If you think about it, Kanye doesn't have any street cred. He has put out some classic albums. However, we all know that he isn't the most lyrical rapper in the world. And to top it off, the whole rap community knows that he uses ghostwriters. That's already three strikes in the world of hip hop. However, despite all odds, Kanye somehow managed to turn all his weaknesses into strengths. And in my opinion, his affiliation with Jay-Z helped him do just that. Now Cameron did an interview with Shade45 in 2017. He spoke about his time at Rockefeller Records and recalled being in a studio session with Jay-Z and Kanye West. Cameron witnessed Kanye freestyling for Jay. At the time, Kanye was simply known for his producing skills and nothing more. As Talib Kweli put it, nobody wanted to hear Kanye rap. Rappers would find a way to get Kanye to give them beats without listening to him rap. But Kanye would rap for them anyway. Everybody was trying to figure out a way to get Kanye to give up his beats without wanting to hear him rap. Now when Kanye freestyled for Jay-Z, Jay would pay him no mind. Jay would be on his phone, he'd be in his thoughts, he was doing everything besides listening to Kanye rap. It appears Jay-Z was not interested in Kanye's story at all. However, when Jay was avoiding Kanye, other people were paying attention. Cameron saw something in Kanye, and so did Dame Dash. After witnessing Kanye's talent, Dame Dash decided to work with him, and the result of that one decision eventually led to what would become College Dropout. Kanye always used to be rapping. I heard a song on his album because I haven't heard the whole album. I remember being in the studio rapping for Jay and Cam on some shit on his new album and I remember clear as day what he was talking about and Jay was just really ignoring this again. Jay is just looking at him and this thing is rapping his heart out to Jay like I'm listening. I'm like, you know he's Kanye. He's not a rapper. He can do beats, but I'm listening. I'm like, this thing is spitting a little bit, but it's kind of weird. But what he's saying is kind of tough. Jay was ignoring this. So Dame is the one who's seen it. He's like, yo, Kanye got some shit. It's gonna be some backpack shit. So Dame co-signed Kanye, and he's the one who put the Kanye album out. Dame believed in him. Dame is the one who believed in what he had going on. Now, like I said earlier, Dame is the one who put the focus on Kanye where nobody else would. He nurtured Kanye's career in the beginning, but at the end of the day, he found out the hard way that he was fighting a battle between wealth and loyalty. But I'll talk about that more in a second. Now Jay-Z did an interview with Time in 2016. During the interview, he spoke about why he didn't notice Kanye's potential right away. Jay didn't understand how the public would respond to Kanye's music and image because it was unconventional. Also, Jay grew up in the hood. He was the guy in the streets making money, whereas Kanye didn't live that life at all. So Jay didn't give Kanye much attention because he didn't relate to Kanye's story and because he didn't think that Kanye's music would be embraced by the fans. We all grew up street guys who had to do whatever we had to do to get by. Then there's Kanye, who to my knowledge has never hustled a day in his life. I didn't see how it could work. Now I personally don't blame Jay-Z for not knowing whether Kanye would blow up or not. During that time, rappers wore baggy clothes, do rags and Timberlands, Tupac and Biggie's music was still all over the radio, Eminem was on the come up, and he signed 50 Cent, who dropped one of the most gangster albums of all time. My I don't know what you heard about me, but that you can't get a dollar out of me. So you know, hip hop was still in its gangster phase. It must have been difficult for Jay-Z to see where Kanye would fit into the mix. Now, now as you all know, College Dropout did amazing numbers right out the gate. The album came in at number 2 on the Billboard 200 and sold 441,000 copies in the first week. College Dropout put Kanye West on the map. It was an unconventional album that challenged the sound and direction that hip hop was heading in. The project had massive singles such as Through the Wire, Jesus Walks, and Slow Jams. Through his music, Kanye West finally became the superstar that he aspired to be. But again, that couldn't have happened without Dame Dash. In my opinion, Kanye's decision to stay with Jay-Z, the person that didn't see his talent right away, over Dame Dash, 
the person that gave him an opportunity, is a perfect example of what happens when the relationship between wealth and loyalty is put to the test. Kanye had to choose between being loyal to Dame and acquiring wealth with Jay-Z. Evidently, Kanye chose wealth and a Kardashian. Now, there's no question that as far as Dame Dash's business skills goes, he's a genius. Without Dame, I don't think Jay would be as successful as it is right now. And I feel like one day when people study the rise and fall of Rockefeller, Dame Dash's contribution might get overlooked. And that's partly because Dame Dash's net worth is significantly lower than Jay-Z's. If Kanye sided with Dame Dash, there's no telling where he would have ended up. He might have been the driving force that saved Dame Dash's music group from tanking. He might have faded into obscurity like a lot of producer rappers. Maybe he would have blown up on another label. Asking what if usually creates more questions than answers. But one thing's for sure. If Kanye sided with Dame instead of Jay, there's no way he'd be married to a Nikov Kardashian right now. I just wanted to express some things that were not sitting right with my spirit. Uh, now that I'm about the sunken place I can think and I could just be yay and just express how I feel. There's a couple things that I want to address. Uh, first of all, I want to address Nick Cannon. Like, I understand that uh, you used to date my wife, but you know, you get in an interview, don't mention my wife. If someone brings my wife up, you say, hey, I respect that man. I'm not speaking on that. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. Do you think Kanye made the right decision? Let me know what you think down below. Also, if you have any video requests, be sure to let me know as well. I think I'll be dropping another What Happened To video next week, so look out for that. And yeah, stay safe. Peace.